Welcome back to another YouTube video. I'm Johnny from Johnny's Garage and today I will show you how I install this sensor system from Hoots. Let's go! Before I do a little unboxing of all the new parts, I wanted to talk about the sensors I currently have on the Austin 7. Right here you can see the water temperature sensor and right here is the oil pressure line which is going to the oil pressure gauge right here and there you can see the water temperature. So that's it and now let's talk about the new sensors. Right in here, this is the Hoots 1. This is the heart of the sensor system, I would say, because right here you can connect all the sensors to it. And it's also battery powered and you can also connect it to the your 12 volt battery system of the car. Then right in here, I'm not sure what's in here. Ah, okay, that's the O2 sensor for the car, which you can see right here. And right in here should be the O2 sensor. An O2 sensor is very great to have because I will soon put a new engine inside this car and the carburetors have to be adjusted again. And I will screw this O2 sensor right in here and then adjusting the engine will be much easier. And you can also leave it in while driving. I won't do that for a long time. I will do it maybe for the first thousand kilometers when I'm running in the new engine. But afterwards I probably will take that out because it doesn't really look great if you have a O2 sensor hanging from the exhaust like that. Right in here are all the different sensors. Here is the oil pressure and oil temperature sensor. There is one sensor for both. This right here is the water temperature sensor. This sensor right here I will connect to the ignition cable because that's for the RPM. The last sensor is the GPS antenna of the car. With that you can see the speed of the car, you can also see where you drive the car. You can also see which oil pressure you had in a certain corner, so this is also very helpful. And the last thing is the holder for your phone. You have to glue this somewhere onto your dashboard, or I guess you don't have to do it, but I will do that, because it's very helpful. And then this thingy is going on top, very strong magnets, very very strong. And then there is this little metal plate, a few different sizes as well. And this you will stick onto your phone case and then your phone will hold onto this holder. Now that I've talked about the sensors a little bit, I think it's time to install them in the car. I think I will start with the power unit. I will put it somewhere right here. There are two ways to do this. One way is with this USB cable. I won't do this. But it's also pretty handy if you don't want to do anything with electrical stuff. You can just take this and plug this USB cable into your 12 volt power output inside your car. But I want to do it this way. So I connected the black cable to the ground and the red cable is on this 12 volt output right here. And this thing is connected to the power plug-in. So that's done. It's not very nice, but I want to have everything working right now and see if it works. And afterwards I will put the cables in a nice way. What are we doing next? I think I will connect the GPS antenna because that's the easiest. And the antenna is also magnetic on the back, so we could put it just here. And they said when the Hoots logo is looking up, you have the best GPS connection. So I will probably leave it right now. I will leave it just here. Now we'll just plug it in right here. It doesn't matter in which port you put it in. The system is so smart, it will recognize which kind of signal it is. And these connectors are also pretty great because you can't just pull it out. If you want to pull it out, you have to pull this little thing backwards and then it's coming out. So it's pretty safe. So if someone is pulling on this wire, nothing is happening. Now I will install the RPM sensor. I just take the zip tie which came with the kit and I will take two of these, put them inside of here. It has to be on the ignition cable from the ignition coil towards the distributor. And yes, this wire is way too long, but in the end I probably put this box somewhere inside the car where you can't see it. And then I need this wire that long. And these parts are all custom made, so you can say you want this wire to be 2 meters long or just 20 centimeters. That's up to you and whatever you order. So put it in here and I think right now I should be able so this is the app right now so there is the that's the battery voltage that's the RPM sensor which I just connected that's why you can see it right here 
And that is uh, from the GPS sensor, the speed of the car. And I think I will just turn the car on and check if the breath counter already works. Maybe I should open the garage door so I don't die. It's already kind of late, so I will just do it very quick so the neighbors don't hate me even more. But before I turn this engine on, I can adjust this scale by pressing on to this one. If the max is at 6000, that's enough. And warning in RPM. Maybe you can set this to 5000. That's all right. And then you click done. And here you can see that the 6000 is now the new maximum. Yeah, let's start the car. That works. The next sensor I want to install is the water temperature sensor. Before I do that, I have to drain the water. With this little sensor, this, there came this little copper washer, but I will also take some Elfil 77, not to secure the bolt, but to make sure it's uh, sealed correctly. Some of you might know this kind of tape. It's kind of old school and you used to, or you put it around the thread and then it will be sealed as well. This product is this, but as a liquid. So I just take a little drop. That should be enough and mount it in here. Now I can hide the wire somewhere on top of here. Here you can see the temperature sensor. I think I will, what's the maximum? I think 120 and Everything above 120 is not good. And maybe my warning should be at 100 degrees or maybe 95. Done. The last sensor I will install is the oil pressure sensor and temperature sensor. And this sits inside the crankcase right there. So I have to take out the old pipe. All right, I just took out this little fitting out of the crankcase. And now I will screw the sensor inside and put the copper pipe on top of the sensor so I still can use my old oil pressure sensor setup. Of course I will also apply some thread sealant onto this thread so there won't be any leaks. All right, the modern oil pressure sensor is now installed as well and the old sensor is attached on top. So here you can see the oil pressure gauge and now I will turn on the car and see what happens. <laughs> to have the car running for so long because the door is closed and the neighbors are probably already sleeping so but you can see that there the pressure was going up to two bar which is all right for such an old car and tomorrow i will drive the car and see how the pressure is when i'm driving that's it for now the main reason why i've installed the hood system right now is because of the oil pressure sensor i have one at the moment in my car as well but always when i'm driving it's maxed out i don't really know the actual value of the oil pressure. With the Hoots oil pressure sensor, I know the exact value of the oil pressure. It's about one bar, so it's not a lot, but it's, I think it's okay for the engine because this engine is running in this car for over four years, probably already 20 years, I have no idea. I own the car for four years and the engine is still running, so the pressure is all right, I guess. So now I know when the new engine only has one bar as well, it's enough but I really needed this number. Yesterday I've talked about this little thing as well. Here you have this little plate. You can stick it on right here. And then I've installed this little plate on my phone, which is very thin. You can't really see it at all. I've been driving for quite some time and the phone didn't fall off, so that's good enough. And I think it even looks pretty good. If you take the phone off and this thing is sitting here, it's, it's all right, it matches with all the other things in the car. So that's pretty clean looking. Let's start up the car. So this is the O2 sensor value. This is the water temperature, the oil temperature, the oil pressure, the voltage of the battery and the engine speed. And yes, the O2 sensor value is way too low. So the engine is running very rich. That's because I have the choke pulled to, to show you. If I put the show back inside, this value will 
increase and the engine speed has increases as well but I can lower that as well now you see how all the values change and how it all works now I will drive and show you a little bit of this view all right another thing which just happened I never heard before I guess when I press a clutch there's a very weird sound and I think it's a throw out bearing from the clutch and I guess it's a good thing that I will take the engine out pretty soon. Yeah, let, let me show you. So to be honest, I don't think it's a bearing. It's something which is hitting the clutch. I have no idea what it is, but I guess I will see it soon. back at the garage the system is working all the way the lambda sensor is working oil pressure oil temperature water temperature the rpm everything is perfect yes i don't like the looks of that right now because all the cables are a little too long and the cable management isn't the best but i will definitely record a second video where i will show you how to install this system without seeing it like that right now because i will probably stored somewhere under here so nobody will see it that's the plan but right now i will take this old engine out and finally install the new one and that you will see in another video so i hope you like the video comment down below like and subscribe and as always keep driving and follow for more